in 1973, when I was 16, my younger sister, dad and I had just moved into a new house that my dad built in this remote area near Van Ness Heights, Minnesota, where there was only one other house a few lots away from us. We moved in on October 31st, Halloween. My dad had to leave town for a little while and gave my sister and me a key with the instructions to move our stuff in. So we did. None of his stuff was there yet, except some furniture. I got ready to go to a costume party with my older sister, who didn't live with us at the time. She picked me up about 7pm, just as it began to snow lightly onto the brown grass. I met a friend at the party, Jay. We were enjoying each other's company so much that we decided to continue the conversation at my house. We got there about 1.30am. No, we didn't win the costume contest. I was dressed as a witch, so mind you, I was dressed like this during everything that followed. Which I think that adds some humour to it. But believe me, there was nothing humorous about what happened that night. My sister and I had our domain downstairs. This house was huge, with two kitchens and the whole shebang. Huge. Jay and I were sitting downstairs in the huge living room that had windows all round the ground level. Where we were sitting, we could see the driveway and the front door. We had one lamp on, and the light at the front door was shining also, and illuminating the driveway and the room we were in as well. So there, I think I had to stay it set. It was by 2.30am and we were sitting on this love seat chatting away about this and that. At no time did we discuss anything about weird, supernatural, paranormal or anything even remotely like these topics. Suddenly, we heard a voice. First, I noticed the tone of the voice was like no other I had ever heard. When I noticed that the voice was vocalising, to my absolute horror, this voice was moaning in such a pathetic, horrible way, filled with pain and suffering, and loud. I remember marvelling at the tone of the voice. It was so different and seemed to come from everywhere at once. Then, just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, it went from this horrible moan to this insane, manacle laughter. It was absolutely horrifying. Then it went back down to a moan, then back to a laugh, then back to a moan, then it stopped. Jay and I looked at each other wide-eyed and mouths open. It has to be a Halloween trick someone is playing on us, I said. Yeah, Jay replied hesitantly. Let's search around and see if we can find out what's going on, I suggested. Jay agreed, so off we both went towards the hallway. He took the stairs up to the foyer, and I continued down the hallway to my little sister's room. I opened her door, and she was truly asleep. I woke her up anyway and asked her if she knew anything about this, or heard it. She was just irritated with me for waking her up, but said she heard nothing, which was absolutely mystifying considering the volume of it. I went back to the hallway towards the living room as Jay was coming down the stairs. He was white as a sheet. I, I heard it again up there, he said. No way, I replied. I wasn't that far away. I should have heard it too. I didn't. Neither of us found anything to explain it. We went back to the living room and sat again on the love seat. We talked about what happened and affirmed that we both experienced the same thing. Then we changed the subject and tried to forget about it. When it happened again, this time though, the sound seemed to permeate our very souls. We suddenly felt so very sad. When the moaning and laughter stopped this time, we both knew this wasn't a joke of any kind. But we weren't ready to admit it to each other. Okay, I said. The search is on. 
We find out who the prankster is, or else die trying. Right? So off we went. We searched every inch of that house. Outside, no one had come near the house in ours. I could tell by the new layer of undisturbed snow. We spent 45 minutes looking in ovens, freezers, lamps, under every table in the house, under every couch and in every couch, every chair, every corner, cabinet, closet, every wall, doorway, I mean every inch of that property. Nothing. We find nothing and no one. And I knew no one would even think of such a Halloween prank let alone execute it with such professionalization. I truly mean that the voice was like nothing I've ever heard before or since. It was the most frightening voice I've ever heard. And if by some horrible misfortune I was to hear it again, I swear my heart would stop instantly. Yet our Halloween horror wasn't over yet. We finished our search and went back upstairs. We started to discuss the possibility that something supernatural was happening. But then we brushed it off in some kind of crazy delusion. We wanted to believe that it was really just a joke somehow. This illusion would soon be crushed. The eerie voice began again. Only, this time, was nothing like the other times. This time, it permitted us completely. We were both completely filled with feelings of despair, hopelessness, helplessness, and pointlessness. I struggled to say something, but couldn't manage it. It was pointless. It felt pointless to think at all. Tears were streaming from our eyes. We both experienced the sensation of our skin crawling. I truly believe we were in the presence of pure evil. This was pure evil that we experienced and on a personal level. When we snapped out of it, we looked at each other and saw the tears on our faces. When our eyes met, I knew that he knew exactly what I experienced and that he knew that I knew. We also were convinced that this was no prank. By now, it was close to 4am and we were literally exhausted. Jed refused to leave my sister and me there alone. So he slept on the couch and I went to my room. I spent a night of terror and fear of going near the bedroom door because of the image of a creature waiting to kill me on the other side. This was not coming from my mind though, it was coming to me from somewhere else. I just lay awake until the sun was up and I heard Jay awake out in the living room. It was a horrifying experience that I did not soon forget, I remember like it was yesterday. It's hard not to, when someone touches you, your soul, with evil like that. And it did just that. Did you have a good world when you died? Enough to base a movie?